Hello, welcome to the second episode of Anupali. Let me first say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers of this land. And I do hope that you had a wonderful Father's Day with your family, with your children. I commend you for taking up your responsibility as fathers and embracing the role you can play in building strong families, the basis of a strong society. I especially want to shine a light on the single fathers of Dominica. It is not often that we acknowledge the efforts of our single fathers. And there are many of those men in our communities who are making the necessary sacrifice to ensure their children have the best opportunities. I want to highlight and thank those fathers among us who work hard to feed, clothe, and educate their children all on their own. We see you and recognize the role you play in bringing up children who can be well-meaning, contributing members of society. I want to take this opportunity to shout out some of you who are doing your best, despite your challenges, to provide a safe and nurturing environment for our children in which they can thrive and be happy. I also want to take the opportunity to encourage those farmers among us who are slacking off to take up your responsibilities. A father's role in a child's life is indispensable. If it means paying up because the court has mandated you to do so, then do it. Make sure your child support payment is in at the end of the month. But really, it should not have to get to that stage of mothers taking us to court. Take up your responsibilities from day one so that your child is always given the best. But more importantly, I encourage us fathers to be there emotionally for our children. Let us show them love and affection. Material support is good and necessary, but it is not all. Let us show our children always that they are valued so that they can develop into confident, well-adjusted members of our society. But my dear friends, before we move into our discussion this, this week, I want to bring you up to date on a few of the things we have been up to this past week. As we reopen the economy and make plans for the reopening of our borders, there is so much to consider. Our first priority remains the safety of our citizens. And so we are putting measures in place, engaging various stakeholders, and developing guidelines to minimize the risk of any further infections when travelers begin to come into the country. Even as we contend with the impact of COVID-19, we continue to focus on the business of improving the lives of the Dominican people. As I mentioned in the first program last Sunday, 254 families benefited from new housing this past week. On Wednesday, we handed over 64 keys to residents of Grand Fond. On Thursday, 122 residents of La Plain and Dillis received keys to brand new homes. And on Friday, 67 residents of San Sauve, Good Hope, Pilid Sufre became proud new homeowners. And I am very happy for all of them. The commitment of this government has never changed. Our aim is to revolutionize housing. There is a long held view that the gateway to eliminating poverty is access to decent housing with inferior sanitation. We remain focused on providing our people with decent homes in which to raise their families and live in comfort. That has been afforded these families. We are fulfilling our responsibility to keep our people safe, especially during the hurricane season and beyond. When we talk about building resilience, these are the measures we are talking about. Policies 
that impact the lives and livelihoods and put people in better positions to provide for and protect their families. Also, this past week, I assumed the rotating chairmanship of the OECS Authority. This comes at a time when we are facing, as a region, challenges brought on by COVID-19. These challenges are compounded by the threats posed by the hurricane season. As I told my OECS colleague heads on Thursday, my focus and our focus will be on finding common ground with the reopening of our borders, given the realities of COVID-19. I also identified the need to develop a common approach to improving telecommunications services within the sub-region to ensure that all citizens, no matter their economic or social circumstances, have access to reliable digital services, especially for educational purposes. I am also focused on strengthening food security, not only in Dominica, but throughout the sub-region. This, I believe, has become even more of an imperative as we face successive disasters in the form of hurricanes, this COVID-19 pandemic, and other such emergencies. My dear friends, recent events have highlighted the importance of safe and affordable food supplies for the peoples of the region, and also the opportunity to increase production for export. We in Dominica are well placed to take the lead in this effort. And tonight, I will spend some time talking about just that. Tonight, we also have with us Mr. Shane Carey. And as you know, this government has demonstrated considerable commitment to small business development over the years. The objective has always been to inspire and assist young people to forge their own paths in business, in entrepreneurship. We want citizens with interest in all fields of endeavor to take charge of their financial well-being and of their future. Today, as I indicated, I have invited a young businessman, Shane Carrier, to talk to us. But in this case, I am the one who is inspired by the initiative and drive I have seen from this young gentleman from Portsmouth. He is here with me today because I want him to serve as an inspiration to those of you who may be considering monetizing your skills, making that jump and setting up your own enterprises. Shane Carrier is the proprietor of Carrier Systems, a local and regional installer of professional IT networks. They do cabling, cable uh, TV, surveillance, and access control. I want to welcome to this program Anupale this evening, Shane Carrier. Uh, welcome, Shane. Shane, incidentally, uh, is my former student at the PSS, and he reminded me um, some time ago that I also taught him at the State College, uh, well, back then, the CIFOCO. Shane, welcome. Thank you very much, Honorary Prime Minister. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you. The pleasure is ours. So tell us, tell us about the business. When were you established? Carrier Systems was established in 2009. At that time, uh, I was building my home and I needed additional income. And what we decided to do was to, like you said, monetize the skill. Um, currently, we own an office in, in Portsmouth. And um, at that office, we provide a myriad of services. The services that we provide are in ICT solutions, uh, surveillance, access control. We also provide solutions in renewable energy, electricals, audiovisual, and building automation systems. Shin, I mean, you were not an old man like me. I mean, how old were you when you started your business? I was 26 years old when I, I decided to, to, to go into to that type of business. And, and like the company says, it's a solutions company. And we saw the need for those solutions uh, with the small businesses around. Sounds good. T tell me, why did you decide to make the jump uh, into business ownership? I know you spoke about um, you need to make extra money, but what other reasons 
I know money is the driving uh, goal of, of any business, but, but why did you decide to go into IT, for example? Well, it could be very challenging as an individual going into business. And um, what you would notice that most customers don't trust an individual with their systems. They rather deal with a company. Mm -hmm. So they, they kind of empower themselves by knowing that, okay, a company will take care of their solutions. But why IT is that we notice that most of our businesses here, they lack the technical support and that now put them at a disadvantage with their, their, their competitors. But I'm also interested in, in the challenges you face and, and the successes as well. Um, how are you growing your business and contributing to your community at the same time? Some of the challenges that we had with the business is mainly human resource, finding skilled young persons with that drive, uh, the persons that want to get involved in that type of technology. The challenges that we had again was financial, being able to invest. We, we did not have that capital to invest how we how we'd want. Ways in which that we grow the company is by cross-training our staff. We also forge good relationships with, good relationships with our, our vendors to supply us with good products, good support. Those are ways that we, we, we tend to, to grow the business. Mm. I, I also know in our discussion some time ago, um, you have explored the, the creative solutions uh, in the field of agriculture. Um, for example, you developed the solar uh, power irrigation system uh, using solar panels. Okay. Tell us about this. Yeah, that's one of the cost-effective solutions that we have at um, Carrier Systems for the young farmers, or small farmers, you should say. And not all farmers have access to, to the WASCO or, or, or water under pressure for irrigating their farms. So what we did is that we designed a system using um, pumps, solar panels, mm. storage tanks, where farmers who cultivate near rivers are able to pump water to a storage tank and irrigate their farms, irrigate it through, through gravity, gravity um, flow or even through pump pressure. That's how that we, we created that solution, especially for farming, so that they are able to, to water their fields and so on. So this system is fully automated? Currently, the system is not fully automated, but it is designed to be that way. Okay. We actually removed that component so that it could have become more affordable in the startup. Okay, okay, I get you. Now, many young people in Dominica have great ideas and I know they want to be their own bosses, chart their own paths. What advice would you give to people who may be considering venturing out on their own? Most, most successful entrepreneurs, they, they go into business for something that they're passionate about. Without the passion, there's, there's no business. You also have to understand the risks. You have to be comfortable with the risks. You have to do research, market research. Is mm. Who are your customers? Who are you going to sell to? What are your products? Is it in demand? You also have to look at other factors that, that no one might think about, you know? So those are some of the things that people have to look at. You also have to remain committed. Consistency is key. You also have to be able to think outside the box, come into business to manage with a clear head. Only then you can see reward. Mm -hmm. well, you, you're in small business, you, you, you spoke about some of the challenges that you had, um, some of the successes that you had. But based on your experience in the market, what policies or measures do you believe we in the government can consider to, one, cause you to sustain your business, two, cause you to make more money, and three, to make you rich? I mean, because, I mean, you're in the business to make money uh, and to create a better way of life for yourself. What, what policies and pro, uh, measures do you believe this government can consider well, to facilitate your, your, your business enterprise? Well, generally speaking, not only for my business, but for small business in general, I believe that government, I mean, they have done so already, but they should continue to at least make the young businesses know all the avenues that are available to support them and make sure that those facilities are published in, in all relative medias. Also, I believe that the government, um, they should at least for registered businesses that have started within one year, have some either tax breaks so that they could act actually catch up with, them, with themselves. I also believe that the government should actually try to 
encourage local businesses by creating a, a national point system where support local, you'll be able to gain points by buying local. Those points you can now use to offset duties, taxes, or, or government fees. No, I mean, I, I, I had a discussion last night and I met with some young people and some of them were saying to me that they never heard about the youth business trust, for example. And, and so I agree with you that one of the things we need to do in the government is to promote um, some of the offerings that we have uh, to support um, small businesses. But, but in, in, in respect to additional sources of access to financing, if you were to advise me on setting up a small business development fund, what are some of the terms and conditions you would advise me on? Well, starting off a business, like we all know, takes a financial burden. So the advice that I would give what is to, to incubate that business. Incub incubate the business and have it available through financing for partnership owners. And then the, and then the national points you're talking about. So we go, we have a card. We go to, to your business and, and any other small business as, uh, as residents and citizens. We procure services and points are given to us. Points are given to you. Yeah. And in, in the tax breaks, you're talking about what about tax breaks we're talking about? Well, for developing businesses, the tax break that we're talking about, for example, is import duties and products. Mm -hmm. If you're starting up business and you, you're bringing in products to resell or products to even install, tax breaks on those products so that you can actually kind of build up the business for the first year. Yeah, there's a, there, we've had a piece of legislation, a draft legislation, the Small Business Development Bill, I believe. Um, that we have been toying around for some time. I, 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 based on what you're saying, I believe with some additional improvements, this might be a piece of legislation that would address some of the challenges, not all, but some of the challenges that you're, pro you're proposing there. Um, but we want to thank you very much. You know, I said to young people, there are, we have lots of positive people out there. I have the greatest, uh, greatest admiration. Um, Shane serves as an inspiration to people like myself. You know, at 26, he could have set up his own business. At 26, he could have um, started the construction of his home. At 26, he could create jobs um, for his uh, fellow men in this country. Uh, and, I, I'm, and I know that there are many um, such people like, like Shane out there. And we need to reach out as citizens and residents to support in them. Um, you know, uh, thank you, Shane, for making the time to speak to the country because I believe that we need to have people like you speaking to the public, speaking to, to, to us in Dominica, and let us understand that there are a lot of positive things happening in our country. And let us, let us highlight these things, and let us reach out and look out for people like Shane and procure services uh, from him. So I want to thank you uh, again, uh, Shane, uh, for your commitment to our country. It's our country. We are young people. We have to work to, to build a country so that we can bequeath a better Dominica to, to our children. Um, and again, I have taken note of some of his suggestions. And you may very well, uh, you shouldn't be surprised if you find some of those suggestions in my budget address um, something, very, so, something soon, something this year, um, so that we can see how we can, we can sustain um, the investment of small businesses like yourself. Thank you very much. We will take a, do you have any, Parting words for the young people in particular, or for all of us. Eh? Well, I would just like to say to the young people, especially young entrepreneurs, believe in yourself. If you're passionate about something, believe in it, trust in it, and go ahead with it. Thank you. Solid words. Could not say it better. Thank you very much, my friends. Let me take a two-minute break, and we'll come back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back. We, as we recover from the impact of COVID-19 and rebuild the economy, agriculture will take a prominent role. I am, I, as everybody knows, I am passionate about this sector because I recognize the many opportunities to expand and to get into production of new crops for local consumption and for export, importantly. There are also nutritional and health benefits associated with this. And, you know, I do a little farming. Uh, I consider myself to be a substance farmer. I have tried squash, I've tried cantaloupe, I've tried honeydew, and all of these things grow in Dominica, and I understand that they're very expensive <laughs> at, in, in the supermarkets. Um, I believe that there are options that farmers in Dominica can also look at. Uh, melons, not only seasonal melons, but year-round. Uh, we're talking about sweet peppers, um, the yellow bell peppers, the red bell peppers. I know we have um, we have done some white bell peppers in um, in Portsmouth at the, at the Chinese Agricultural Technical Mission, mm -hmm. and we've also done purple mm -hmm. um, bell peppers in Portsmouth. You're talking about broccoli and cauliflower. These things fetch for for high prices. Um, at the supermarkets. Squash, I understand squash is about $11 a pound or $13 a pound in the supermarkets. Um, cantaloupes, we mm -hmm. import cantaloupes. And I'm saying, but why don't we grow cantaloupes and sell cantaloupes here? We can grow cantaloupes. I have tried it in Vekas and, and, and down in, in Rosa and they've, they've, they've done well. I see the Chinese are doing this exceptionally well in Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. um, mushrooms. Yeah. I mean, mushrooms yeah. is cost about $19.38 a pound. Wow. I mean, if we put a few greenhouses and we get a few farmers to grow mushrooms, I mean, um, your dollars can mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your dollars can mushroom. So, we, I mean, so the, the, the number of things that we're doing we, that we can do, that we have to do in, 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 in Dominica. And, and so we have to address the high import bill. People say the, high, the, 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 the food import bill is high. But we consume it. Mm. If we want to reverse it, we have to support local, local, um, locally grown produce. Um, growing local and buying local can help grow the industry, boost the economy, and create jobs. Keep our monies here. Prevent us from sending all this foreign exchange out of Dominica. I strongly believe in the, in the potential of the agricultural sector. And I am pleased with the work I have seen over the past months to re-engage farmers and get them back to their farms. We are seeing a targeted effort to involve small and backed farmers, and, and that's good. We have more Dominicans growing their own food, eating what we grow and growing what we eat. <coughs> so tonight, I have invited the Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Fidel Grant, to join me to tell us some of the initiatives on the way in that sector. I know the efforts of our farmers must be complemented by measures in trade to assist them with marketing and the sale of their produce. And so the Trade Minister, Honorable Ian Douglas, is also here with us. Gentlemen, welcome to Anupali. The, I have been told by the public that they were excited of the fact that you were going to be on. Um, agriculture and trade, this is something that is very important. And there are questions which the public have asked me as their chief servant to ask you. So, <laughs> so any question I ask you, it coming from the public, I am just, I'm, I'm just reporting or uh, uh, asking the question on their behalf. And so one of the questions they've asked me to ask you, Mr. Grant, is, and by the way, good evening to Wesley and Palm Tree and Woodfordale, especially Palm Tree. Um, what assurances can you give to our people that we are, in fact, reaching the farmers who need assistance under the World Bank funded project and that distribution is equitable? Good evening, PM. Good evening to the viewers and listeners. Happy Father's Day to the farmers of Wesley Woodford Hill and Palm Tree. Um, as it relates to the World Bank project, in order to benefit from that project, you must apply you must fill out an expression of interest form under the project. That form, after it's filled out, an extension officer 
or a, a team of extension officers along with monitoring officers from the World Bank will visit your farm and verify your holdings. After verification, a team of technical professionals would verify what your application is saying and um, your application is approved or disapproved. In instances where your application is disapproved and you're not satisfied as a farmer, you can then apply for, you can then apply through the grievance process that is available in the World Bank project. But it is important that um, I inform the viewers and the listeners, specifically the farmers, that in this program we have zero political influence and interference. Thus, the farmer has been satisfied with the delivery of the program to date. Now, the, there's, a, there's a concern from the farmers with regards to land ownership. So, for example, I have had a challenge in Penville where the farmers do not own the land. They have applied, but they're not qualified. What, what, what actions have the, has the ministry taken to assist those farmers in my area? That concern has been dealt with um, just about two months, two months ago where we have written to the World Bank and we have asked that they modify the program so that farmers who had land issues could benefit. So in terms of the requirement for land, that has been replaced with a receipt mm. that you have been selling to either Dexia or another supermarket, or you have been a farmer and you have owned or you are a holder of a produce seller's license. So what we have seen over the last few weeks is an increase in terms of the number of persons who have expressed interest. So what I would like to urge the farmers who have not applied because of that difficulty, they should go into the extension office Forms are available across the country for for filling out. Now, this is a sixty-seven million dollar um, facility, all grants to the farmers. Um, what are we putting in place to ensure that these investments have a lasting impact? And, and it is not a a one-off. You, you don't speak part so uh, you know. People say it's a cool wash. Um, it was a one-off, a one-off um, impact. What 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 are we putting in place to ensure that five, ten years down the road, we can see the impact of this of the six to seven million dollars on the economy? A key component of the program is monitoring and evaluation. So we have monitoring officers who go out to the farms mm -hmm. constantly after you have received your package and benefited from from the project. So they would go out and they will continue training you in how do you apply your fertilizer and so on. Um, they will take out the, a record of your yield so that to ensure that, okay, I was at um, 1,000 pounds before I moved to 2,000 pounds. That sort of measurement is mm. being done. Um, also, it's important that we, we emphasize that as it is now under the program, persons are receiving packages of up to $20,000. Mm. That is an investment in the farm. We know if you save money, you earn money. And that is putting back money into the farm that you could have done other things with. No, twenty thousand dollars, in my view, in agriculture, in, in agriculture, is a lot of money. Um, the other question that they've asked me to to ask you, because there is a the notion that there are not young people involved in agriculture. So they've asked me for one of the Facebook posts. Uh, what is the Ministry of Agriculture doing to encourage more young people to get involved in farming and fishing. Can, can these young people also benefit from all of these programs in the Ministry of Agriculture? If they are existing farmers, yes. Yeah. Uh, in terms of benefits from the government over the years, in terms of fishing, we have seen substantial investment in terms of boats. So for instance, over the last five years, we had several boats being built locally and this cost in the region of between twenty and thirty thousand mm. dollars. We would also provide engines to the to the young fishermen. So for a young fisherman deciding to go into fishing, you would have received a thirty five thousand dollar investment in the initial stages. Mm. So what does that mean? On your first catch catch, sorry, you could now save money, feed your family and have money set aside for fuel without any overheads outside of what you would have on a daily basis because you have no loan. And these are the kind of investments the government has been making in terms of fishing. In terms of agriculture, as it is now, there is still money available at the aid bank at 2%. Mm. Um, so persons who are interested could apply under that facility. 
um, a lot of the young people have been complaining that we do not have lands, or I do not have access to lands. We have been working with the Ministry of Lands to identify areas that have been designated for farming. So if a young person, for instance, in the area of Wesley Wood Fortel is interested in farming, they could fill out an application with lands and surveys, and then a piece of land of two, three acres could be assigned to them for that purpose. So we provide you with low-cost financing, we provide you with the land, and occasionally we provide you with inputs in the event that you're looking at to And, and my understanding is that, up. is that these lands will be leased to these young people at $1 per annum. That is $1 correct. $1 per annum. Yes. The state lands. Yes. Okay. Now, tell, tell, tell us in, 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 our, in our country, what are we producing and exporting in large quantities these days? I, I know notwithstanding COVID-19, we continue to export um, to, very, to islands that, were, that are receiving the crops and so forth, or, or produce rather. Um, but tell us, what, which are the crops that we are producing and exporting in large quantities? Okay. Um, the ministry recently conducted a survey or did some research in terms of production and what are we produce, <coughs> producing. Mm -hmm. you know, as a new minister, I wanted to understand what is the industry doing, how are we doing it, and who is doing it. So I had meetings with Dexia, I had meetings with the Hoxas Association, the large exporters. Um, I visited farms, the large holdings, the small holdings. And as it is now, we are traditionally exporting, what we are exporting is the traditional crops. Mm -hmm. um, the yams, the cassava, the dashin, green bananas, planting. But interestingly, during the COVID period, we have seen a, a spike in terms of um, ginger and turmeric. You know, so that is, that is an area that the ministry is playing co close attention to. There is also a demand for our passion fruit. Um, as it is now, we are exporting it as pulp and an in the raw state. But what we have realized that as pulp, you get a better price Impressive. for your for your fruit. So these are the areas that um, in demand and exporting and producing in large quantities at the moment. But as it is now, the ministry um, with the partners at the Chinese mission are looking into different crops. As you indicated earlier, as it is now, we have a fully cultivated greenhouse with over 400 cantaloupe plants, which would be ready in about a month's time. I mean, the greenhouse may be 20 feet by 30 feet. And then from that greenhouse, if you were a commercial farmer, you would likely to yield somewhere in the region based on the price of the cantaloupe at, at the time between ten and $15,000 from that one greenhouse within two to three months because that's the time it takes yeah. to yield in terms of the cantaloupe. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, we, we talk about the yams and the dashings and the gingers and the plantains and so forth. But there are also a number of, of agricultural produce that we import mm -hmm. into the country. I mean, we import watermelon. Sad but I mean, I have a watermelon there. <laughs> I mean, let me... You know, I like people just, I want to show people, I mean, what is wrong with this watermelon? Why are we importing watermelon from elsewhere? I mean, this watermelon came from Salisbury. This is from Hillary Shin for the, a, a big farmer in Salisbury. I bought this from him and so forth. I mean, why are we buying watermelons from overseas and, and, and spending $400,000? In sending foreign exchange out to Dominica, you, you can you imagine four hundred thousand dollars in the hand of Hillary Shillingford and others in Salisbury? Yeah. I mean, so, so I believe that we in um, we in Dominica, we need to watch our consumption practices. We can grow those things in Dominica. This is a watermelon. Um, though I have grown bigger ones than that in my family. <laughs> um, but 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 this is thing. I mean, we also we have this. Um, this, this peppers. I have been told that this is about what? $13 a pound? A pound, a pound. A pound, a pound yes. 13? Mm -hmm. 30? 30. 30. I mean, you're a knife or something? <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, is a knife? I, I, it's $30 a pound on this thing. I mean, I want to see whether we have, we have gold dust <laughs> in, 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 in this peppers. I mean, this thing in Cameron Court, that thing almost like robbery. I mean, I mean, yeah. I have seen much better qualities from this. In our country and so this is I, I'm disappointed that there are no gold dust in this thing um, and I'm not even sure these things can grow I mean um, we have to we really have to go into those areas and to see whether we can eliminate the need for imports into our country and and to get our farmers 
to benefit from this. This is $30, I'm told, $30 a pound. So, so there, there are opportunities there, I believe, that, that we have to look at. And I suspect what the Ministry of Culture may want to do is to, is to identify um, farmers. Country, look, this is small. This is, you can always put it in your pocket. I mean, we are, down on the Chinese um, technical mission, the quality is, 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 is much it's better. The much size is bigger. 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 And it, you know, if you're suffering from diabetes, you're just from this thing that was grown here in Dominica. It's sweet. And yeah. I have tried it. And it grows. And, and so we need to maybe encourage farmers to go into those crops mm -hmm. so that the three, four hundred thousand dollars we, we, we're paying to import cantaloupes in Dominica, we can grow those things here in, in our country. Uh, this is a small cantaloupe. Um, and I understand that is about nine dollars or so, nine thirty, nine dollars and thirty cents a pound. Mm -hmm. I understand? Um, so it's something that we need to look, we, we need to look at um, going forward. So I, I, I believe that there, there are huge opportunities in agriculture. But in, 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 response, yeah, in response to that, the ministry, what the ministry has de decided to do, what we are looking to do is establish um, estate-type farms. So as it is, we are working now in collaboration with the Chinese. So what you will find is five to ten acres mm. with two to three crops that is available all year round. Mm. So as it is now, we have just about maybe seven greenhouses that we are going to install. We have, we have acquired the land. We have some preparation work to do. But in terms of making certain commodities, bell peppers, cantaloupes, and so on available, we are going to tackle it with an estate type farm. Um, so what you will find is a group of young people who would be owners of the estate would be working mm -hmm. to produce these specialized crops. And of course, with the Ministry of Agriculture, along with the Chinese mission, would be providing the technical assistance that they need. So we're not just going to give it to them. We're going to work with them until they have come established farmers. But I, I, I want to, I would like to support you on this because the concern we have had is that sometimes you have ten dollars and you spread it too thin and you don't see impact i think we need to focus on a few farmers empower them with these crops see how it goes and see if we can expand it so mm, i that is correct this, I, I believe this is a, a a wonderful way to go but the other thing we have grant the challenge of labor <laughs> farm labor and the work ethic of, of farmers i mean farmers tell me that if you get a good farm laborer you're lucky um, but some guys come at 7 o'clock, they leave at 11 o'clock, they have to take um, their breakfast <laughs> on that, on that, on that <laughs> forward job and so on. Then if they have people who consume the spirit of man, they have to throughout the day um, consume a few drinks. I mean, how do we address the work ethic of farm labor? And, 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 and what, do, what can we do to overcome this challenge? The, the, the the issue of labor is something that the ministry has been paying special attention to because several farmers have has complained to the ministry as it relates to the cost and the availability of farm labor. Um, due to the shortage, we have seen a skyrocket in terms of the price of farm labor. So the ministry's response to that through the World Bank project, what we have been doing is providing a lot of tools. So we have augers, we have tillers, we have um, swipers. So this eliminates a lot of manual labor that the farmer would require. Mm -hmm. Also, what we are doing is we are looking at um, doing a small unit um, in terms of mechanized machinery, um, mm -hmm. large tractors and so on. Um, we will be receiving a donation in a few months' time from the Chinese mission in terms of small equipment that the different regional offices could then provide mm -hmm. to the farmer. In addition to the, the donation from the Chinese mission, we as a ministry will be purchasing our own tools in terms of mechanizing the farm operations. But in terms of the cost of labor, um, we have been speaking with the labor division. We have spoken to the attorney general's chamber because what we recognize is that good labor sometimes could run you $120 per day. And that is the price that is set by the labor award, not by any institution or by any standard. Mm. So that is something that we are reviewing with the support of the labor division and the attorney general's chambers. I think we should take some questions. I understand the number. Numbers are 611-3400 and 225-3400. So 611-3400, 225-3400. You could either send a WhatsApp message or you can call directly. Um, questions for the Minister for Agriculture, Honorable Fidel Grant. 
Um, while we wait for questions from the public, um, the abattoir. The abattoir was established to take advantage of the market, local market, especially where, where uh, poultry parts are concerned, chicken parts are concerned, and also uh, pork. So we started with these two um, meat kinds. Um, is this a viable option for farmers, the rearing of chickens and pigs to be slaughtered at the abattoir? Yes, it is viable economically. Um, as it is now, um, we have um, reviewed the operations at the abattoir. We have, we have noted some, some challenges in terms of the cost. As it is mm. now, in Dominica, we don't have a hatchery, <coughs> so we import the chicks. Uh, we don't have a feed plant, so we import the feed. Uh, it's important to know that as it is now, in terms of duties on the feed, what you have is 3% environmental charge and the 1.5%. So there is no VAT, there is no import duty on the feed. But what we realize is that the farmer does not have the capacity to purchase a container of feed. So they purchase it in small portions. Mm. So what we are looking to see is how the abattoir could get involved in purchasing the chicks and the feed mm -hmm. and subsidizing the price to the farmers because that would lead to a reduction in the cost per pound of the poultry and the pork as well. But farmers are also telling me, look, scary. I mean, I sell, I mean, I, I bring five pigs to, to their men at the abattoir. Um, yes, a little phone call, please. Hello. Hello? Hi, yes. go ahead, please. Wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity to reach you guys. Hey, happy Father's Day to all the fathers on the program also. Yes, th thank you very much. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, wonderful. Mr. Grant. Good evening, sir. How are you doing, brother? I'm good, thanks. That's good to know. So far, PM, you've been having a very wonderful program. You've had a young entrepreneur like myself. I know you have Minister of Agriculture way up my alley. I really appreciate the opportunity to really speak to, to all you live like me and expressing my feelings. First, in, as a young entrepreneur and somebody that in agro-processing, um, <laughs> there's a few hiccups I think that we, we could work on and make life a little bit easier for us young entrepreneurs. One of, one of those areas is that um, in terms of ad administrative assistance, I think too often young entrepreneurs have to go through the struggle or and the bottlenecks of, of making progress in their business when, when the administrators not doing what they're supposed to do. I mean, I've been trying to get a plan approved for my, for my facility, and it's almost a year now, and nobody making it up. Every time I call it one story after me. And every day is another is another issue. Yeah. To to add to that to, um I was part of the problem of contingent that went to China in last year. We were promised that when we came back that um some of our needs the, the, the ministry would meet some of our needs especially in the procurement of, of equipment. Probably is not, not, not even to say buy the equipment for us, but to help us mm. get the equipment to Dominica when we purchase them. Since we come from China, nobody's telling us nothing. Mm. Um, uh, uh, another question I, I also have, and a very burning question is to, to the PM in relation to the COVID relief that is available for young entrepreneurs and business owners. I, I, I struggle in with the fact that the money have been made available, but I don't understand it, and I, I need to a clear understanding of it. What the money is there for, and how it, it is going to be to my benefit. As far as I understand it, we have to bring invoices to every piece of equipment or whatever it is that we want to use the money for. We have to bring invoices for that. Now, somebody like me, I want to have a working capital. I also want to close up some of my debt. I also want to pay up on some of my loans. I also want to have money developed to, um, to buy more raw materials. As, as I am right now working, I 
I make more, I do more business, and I get less money. And it's because, it's because of how my business is structured. So I welcome the fact that the money is available, but as to how the money is going to really affect and impact my business moving forward, I'd really like a clear understanding as to what, what is its bank role and how it's going to okay. affect me and benefit me All right. as a union entrepreneur and as a yeah. business. Entrepreneur. Thank you very much, sir. Thank we you have noted much. your 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 questions, and I, um, I, I'm not sure, Grant, you you want to respond to some of the concerns he has raised, and, and maybe provide some advice. Um, the, well, I I think I know the caller quite well. Um, in terms of the agro processors, um, agro processors follow with the Ministry of Trade, but we have been discussing bilaterally in terms of how it is that we can provide assistance. And we have recognized that the machinery and the availability of machinery is an issue. So we are discussing that as we speak in terms of how government can assist. We are also reviewing in terms of um, the duties. But I, I would like to tell the agro-processors out there that the Ministry of Agriculture, under the Farmer Incentive Program, we do provide assistance to agro-processors because we recognize the agro-processors provide a critical role to our farmers in terms of the consumption of production and in other cases when there is excess production. So we are reviewing in terms of the agro-processors and in terms of the import duties and the availability of machinery. Mm. But, but I also want to say to, to my friend from Kadabishi that um, as a small business owner, you can in fact access concessions for the government system. There is a I, and I think we need to, in the government, we need to educate and inform the public much more on some of the uh, fiscal incentives um, that are available um, f to them uh, as small businesses in our country. So, uh, and we take note of the concerns that you've raised, and I'm sure um, Minister Grant will, will reach out to you on, on, on your specific concerns. Now, I, I was saying that um, there are people who complain to me um, I get WhatsApp messages saying to me, look, I, have, I sold chicken to the abattoir, but I haven't gotten paid. Um, well, why is that happening? Well, why people, I mean, a man brings his 100 birds to you, um, that there's 600 pounds of meat, you paid him 450 or, or thereabout a pound of meat, he, he needs that, those funds to, to reinvest. What's going on at the abattoir that people are getting paid? Payment to farmers was a challenge in terms of the, um, the government machinery in terms of payment. Um, as it is now up to March, we have paid all farmers in full. Mm. And we have recognized the challenges that we have and we have just completed a review of our entire processes in terms of the time a farmer gets paid from the time that he, we would have picked up his animals from his farm. So we should see some improvement within the next financial year as early as July. But but we, but don't we have an impressed account at the abattoir that they have the, that they can write checks directly to the farmers? That's that's how we operate as it speaks. Yeah. So you're saying going forward? Going forward, a we farmer will bring his his um produce, his um chickens or his or, or, the, or the pigs. He will you will you will wait. You'll tell him it's it's five hundred pounds and he'll get paid in, in quick time. That is you, correct. You're giving the people the assurance. I'm giving the people the farmers. Right. You, you heard it from, from Mr. Grant, so um, <laughs> let us take a, a message here. Uh, my question is, my mom lives in, in the good hope, in, in good hope. She has a lot of ginger and turmeric. Her complaint is lack of hucksters. Who can she contact to sell her produce? Ian? Yes, Ian. That, that falls squarely um, under our ministry, the Ministry of Trade. But let me first of all, Say good evening to all your listeners and thank you very much for inviting me and my colleague, uh, Honorable Grant, to this program. It's very interesting and very engaging. And um, we in the Ministry of Trade, Commerce, Entrepreneurship, Innovation, Business and Export Development, um, that question comes squarely under our mandate in our ministry. And you know, we have uh, Dexia, uh, Dominica Export and Import um, Agency, um, which is really responsible for um, all export of fresh produce out of Dominica. And that's what the question is really talking about. And since the uh, onslaught of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen an increased demand for ginger and turmeric. Yeah. I can tell you on average, 
we have about between 30 and 40 crockers bags of ginger and turmeric each leaving um, our pots on a weekly basis. Um, so you can... Uh, but what's the... But what's, yeah. what's the... I mean, if, if, we, if there's an increased demand out there, mm -hmm. are, we, are we meeting the demand? Because this lady in Gurup is saying, I mean, it, uh, yes. she's saying that she has ginger and she's looking for Huckster. Oh, I mean, all you have to do is to contact the pack house. The, we have two pack houses, one in Roseau, one in Portsmouth. The, mm -hmm. the pack house in Roseau is run by uh, Mr. Bristol Lawrence, and the one in Portsmouth is run uh, by Mr. Cliff Sesher on the Dexia. And the, on a weekly basis, uh, we buy uh, turmeric and ginger, especially uh, for the Matnik market. So do we buy from yeah. who we know or do we buy from everybody because, uh, yeah. and, and so forth? We, we buy from everybody. But what happens is uh, we have some regular farmers on the, our farm support program that we deal with. Some farmers that we, we, we sign up, sign contracts with, and they supply us with all of the fresh produce that they have. But that doesn't preclude us um, or exempt us from dealing with all of the farmers. Mm -hmm. So when a huckster or a trader makes an order at the pack house, we call all of the farmers around Dominica to source the produce, the fresh produce that they want. So your advice to this lady from Godop is that if she makes contact with the, with um, the pack house, yes. they will facilitate the purchase uh, of her ginger and turmeric. Absolutely. And they have a mechanism where they can come and pick up the, the ginger and the turmeric from and you. you say that these are not just words? No, PM, these are not just <laughs> words. You can take that to the market. <laughs> okay, okay. Absolutely. We, we, we have a phone call. You heard it from Minister Douglas, okay? You, you'll surely to get your produce sold by the pack house. Yes, caller, please. Hi, good evening. Y yes, sir. And um, happy Father's Day to all of you today. I do all things you have Father's Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Same to you, my friend. Okay. Um, on the, on the local produce, when we, 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 we had a melon, I we went to the, to, the, to the different business places, and they all refused to buy the melon. Mm -hmm. They said they were at the And I find it was kind of hopeless for our own people importing the, the melon from out there than buying the melon. Now, on the other hand, I must big up Lindoman. Because the same best purpose you had in your hand, Mr. Prime Minister, we made, we have had hundreds of those, of those, of those um, peppers. And we no matter buying them from us. Mm. Every time we no matter buying, so I must be up the no Now, on the other hand, my problem, I have a problem. And my, the problem I have is that I do not want to be a sometime or sometime ish farmer when you come for life's life from. I would like to know when will the abattoir be able to to be able to purchase at least fifty to seventy pig per month. Are they going to start um exporting the pork uh, or as is um Dexia or the ministry, ministry of children to combine forces with, with the abattoir to start exporting pork because I can tell this was it makes no sense trying to sell one one pig or two pigs every month. Mm -hmm. I, I am already I am already known to supply fifty pigs per month to the apartment you know. And I would like to know what is the what is the the plan of the apartment moving forward because right now I don't find it making much um um progress in the sense of pork because I mean, going to the to the to the stadium to sell pork on a, on, a, on a Saturday is not enough. I want to hear that we are ready to export, we are to package and export. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Thank, Thank you, you very much, caller. Very sensible questions and suggestions there. Um, but this is a this is a democracy, and people buy what they want to buy. So I think we have to start with us consuming local. And when we go to the supermarket, we should demand from the supermarket uh, our local produce. And I think once we can increase on our consumption of local produce, yeah. then I believe we can get to the 50, 70 uh, pigs per week. 
or even 100 pigs per week. So this is one thing I believe that it is in the hands of us, the consumers in the country. Now, the issue of watermelons being, being imported, the question is, should the government consider tariff on these watermelons? As we do with white potatoes when we have, um, when we have it in season. So I, I think we may need to engage ourselves and to see what kind of protection we can give within the framework of WTO, within the framework of quoted um, a lot of the trade um, agreements which the government, the country has with, um, with, um, with member states of, the, of those organizations. Now, now Grant, Ian, um, you guys don't mind calling you Grant and Ian. Because not I know at all, you, not at all. I know the ministers, <laughs> when we call it honorable minister or something. <laughs> okay, no, you, can, right. you, can, you can call me scary. I don't call it. But, but yes, people are saying to us, the question is this, what is in place to ensure that the produce products fish are sold at a reduced price to the consumer if they receive they should give something back so meaning you get a free boat free motor why isn't why aren't those things passed on to the consumers the savings there? you get free fertilizer free planting material mm -hmm. free equipment implement you get monies for your farm labor you have any people working for you mr grant yeah. ian one of the one of the challenges we, we've had because um with dexia we have what is called the um support program agricultural farm support program where we provide the farmers mm. our contracted farmers with inputs with fertilizer with planting material with some technical support in collaboration with the ministry of agriculture but what you find is, after having received all of that, especially fertilizer, when the crop is ready for harvest, the farmer um, sort of, quote unquote, breaches the contract and sells the produce to a huckster who is willing to pay him more than the, than, than the going rate um, per pound of the particular produce. And that is the problem that we're having. So it is not that uh, there's a lack of production. There is production, but the farmers sometimes do not keep to their agreement and sell the produce um, for for Dexia or make the produce available to Dexia as uh, the terms of their contract would, would dictate. But people tell me Dexia is a waste of time. <laughs> they, they, they were telling me, they tell me, they tell me Dexia, they, Dexia <laughs> take their produce and when they come looking for money, Dexia hiding under the Rosa River. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean it's, I mean, I mean, yes, it's, I mean, to a certain next 10 p.m. But why would Dexia be taking people's produce and not pay them? In the, in that's one of the that's one of the perennial challenges that we have had yeah. because in the huckster in trade, most huckers come to you in the park house or in Dexia yeah. and they say, Okay, give me forty thousand dollars worth of produce. I need to sell the produce in Matnik or in St. Martin and when I am paid by the supermarkets that I supply, when I come back on the return trip, I'll pay you for what I took. And then they run up credits of massive amounts and then you just don't see them. They they, they, they avoid coming to pay they go straight mm -hmm. to the huckster instead. So it's, it's a sort of cat and mouse so kind it's a, of... So, so you know, and both, then, both, both parties have some challenges. Yes, very much so. And then we, we don't want to, to stop receiving the fresh produce from the farmers because that is their livelihood, that's how they survive. We'll, so we, we'll come back to this in a while. Okay. There's a question from, from the public. Yes, please, go ahead. Good evening to you, Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Scarry. Good evening to you, sir. To you and to all your guests and to all your listeners on island and all your listeners in the diaspora. I am calling from Bridgeport, Connecticut. You probably know who we are. <laughs> Good evening to everyone. Um, I'd like to say thank you. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for providing. You may, you may want to turn off your radio or your television. I mean, I know you're giving a nice speech there, but <laughs> we're hearing you. Can, can, you, can you speak up, please? Or? Yes. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, I mean, yeah. better. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, yes. I would like to say, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much for providing for all on the island in shelter, education, health, you know, and etc. even in infrastructure as well. And as I was saying that I, I'm calling from Bridgeport, Connecticut, and you probably know who we are, all right? Yeah. 
Um, what I'm calling about, it's about two, it's two, um, the gentleman, um, Mr. Grant, Honorable Mr. Grant, um, good night, Mr. Um, um, Ian Douglas, um, it's to Mr. Um, Mr. Grant, kind of nervous there. Um, it's about the aquaculture uh, program that we have going on in Dominica, all right? I, for one, I'm a young person, I should not call myself old, but due to retire probably in the next few years from today. Mm. At this present time, I'm thinking about going back to, to, to get a secondary education where I could study about, you know, agriculture and more wildlife. Because I, for one, think that prices of fish is a bit too expensive. So I'm also thinking of maybe, if God help me, you know, in starting a business of my own, sorry to compete with the, the agricultural department, going in business of my own, mm -hmm. where we in Dominica can produce fish at a cheaper cost, even invasive um, species of fish, like for instance, salmon, trout, bluefish, carp, and etc. Yes. You know, can, can you get to the question, that. please? Quick, quick, please. Yes, yeah. yes. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is the agriculture farming um, fishers farmers there? Are they going to start to um, start farming fishes like salmon and trout as well, where they could sell to the public at a cheaper rate? Well, Grant, okay. In well, if the caller has an interest in terms of farm fishing, the, the ministry along with the government would be willing to provide whatever assistance is necessary to assist him. But and as we know as Dominicans, it is difficult to transition into new, into new things. So it's going to be hard to get a fisherman off a boat and into a restricted area to do farm fishing. However, it is something that the ministry is looking at. As we speak, we are rehabilitating our... Um, aquaculture site in terms of prawns we should see that coming on stream soon the hatchery and um, that's one of the areas that we are focused on for now also to let me just add to that that there is a young um, entrepreneur um, in the Postmouth area uh, to be more specific in the brandy area yeah. when he when he knew that the Kapinski was going to be established and to be open he actually established a shrimp um, pond area with about yeah. five or six ponds yeah. in the brandy area and had already started and delivering well, uh, shrimp well, yeah. and was yeah. doing very well um, before the COVID um, caused right. the closure um, of the hotel. So that is another area in terms of entrepreneurship and innovation within the Ministry of Trade that we would be willing to work you know, with young entrepreneurs. But it would have to be private sector driven, supported Absolutely. by government. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, now, tell me, I mean, uh, there are markets in Barbados for example yes. um, they want our dashings they want our yams and other root crops yes. but only if we can supply on a regular basis um, what is the Ministry of Trade Dexia the Park House are doing um, to ensure that we can take advantage of this market yeah you are right at, at present we have a, a, a boat um, called the Scotty Sky, uh, which goes to Barbados, and Barbados literally wants a 20-foot container of bananas on a fortnightly basis. And we have sent so far, I think, about two shipments, and it's looking very promising in that market, in addition to all of the other crops. Right now, we have boats supplying the British Virgin Islands, Antigua, Guadeloupe, Montserrat, Anguilla, Martinique, on, on a weekly basis. And so, it is just for farmers to, to, to produce for us. Some of the major crops we're talking about are dashing. Of course, we, we ship dashing to the United Kingdom and to Miami. We have a market there for dashing. And dashing is also doing very well in the region. We have plantains. Plantains doing very well. There's an outfit in Antigua making plantain chips. So ask us for more and But more I've been told that we are not able to supply this operation in Antigua with sufficient plantain to sustain the planting chips? I, I, I believe about, uh, let's say, within the early part of the year, uh, mm -hmm. February, March, just mm -hmm. when we had the COVID um, onslaught, uh, we had some issues with the scarcity of plantings. But 
in the last two to three weeks a month, we've seen the harvesting of plantains coming on stream. Oh. And I, I was actually quite surprised to, to learn that that outfit in Antigua couldn't find the amongst. So, that, that so you're saying that we have fixed that problem? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, have, I have been in contact with the Minister of Trade in okay. Antigua. And Excellent. Yes. All right, thank you. A phone call, please. Hi, good evening, gentlemen. Hi, good evening to you. Hi, um, I'm phone number Dallas Fora, and I just have a few questions. Um, just two. Um, so my first initial question is, as a young woman who wants to return to Dominica and open a business of her own, how do I go up of accessing information to what land I can purchase or lease from the government in order to start that business. I went to London service. I've been trying to do this for a few years. I went to London service and this year I went again and they told me that the process has changed. Because originally I did find a piece of land, but because of Maria, the land was run over by the river. Mm -hmm. So I talked to Mr. Walsh um, in London service and he told me that the process has changed and I'm wondering who do I have to contact now well, in terms of government exactly. lands, is, is the, is the uh, Commission of Lands, uh, a gentleman called Mr. Lestrade. Um, I'm sure he will be able to direct you and to facilitate your particular request. Obviously, this will have to go to the Minister for his final approval. But the, the, the Commission of Lands, the Chief Surveyor, Mr. Lestrade, is the point person on this um, for, to facilitate your access to government lands. Now, now Ian, I mean, we have the Ministry of Trade. Um, don't you believe that the Ministry of Trade needs to be restructured? Because we, I find that we are focused mainly on WTO, European Partnership Agreement, quoted. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what does that have to do with if a farmer in Penville or in Dillis? I mean, uh, don't I, don't you think that we need to restructure the Ministry of Trade and have a unit or the, within that Ministry of Trade focusing on? Um, market intelligence, you know, um, and facilitating farmers with access to market information outside Dominica. Yeah, you are quite right. And, and as you were speaking, myself and Minister Grant, we were smiling because from the time that the new government was put in place and yeah. the cabinet was put in place, myself and the minister, that has been our thrust. We, we met with a combination of, of the Ministry of Trade and the Ministry of Agriculture. Yeah, and we told them exactly what you were saying. Okay, but okay, you guys have been minister since, since December 17th for day about. Yeah. So when, when are you going to advise the Prime Minister, Cabinet, on the structure? Well, we, we basically told them they need to hit the road running. They, they said that they want to set up this information Who? system where the um, officials from the Ministry of Trade can plug in information and um, extension of... Well, that sounds that sound like people who are trying to... <laughs> put black wool over people's eyes. I mean, what all of these fancy things have to do? Yeah. With, with telling me that they market in Barbados, telling me that they're market in Antigua, and going out there and, and putting this produce on a boat and, 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 and so forth. I mean, it's not that we have human resources there, staff create the unit. I mean, we created a unit for the European Partnership Agreement in, in two days. Yes, yes, yes. So, can we say two weeks? You, you, get, you get to us in two weeks? Absolutely. So when I bring you back in two weeks' time, you can tell them that it's, it's, it's in place? Definitely. Please. Okay. Definitely. We have identified the officers in the Ministry of Trade and the Ministry of Agriculture to spearhead that initiative so we can report to you in two weeks. And sure. these are not only sweet sounding words? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Father's Day, so people say also things <laughs> Father's Day, you know, so um, I was, I was, I was, I was checking the ladies and gentlemen. Not at all. You know, these this guys, they, they will come in on, a, on an easy program. <laughs> <laughs> but I am, I'm only asking you a question the public is asking. Yes, yes. So yes. these questions are not, are not originated yes. from me then. Um, Grant, we have, sorry, there's a caller. Hello? Any caller? No? Hello? Yes, sir, go ahead, please. Good afternoon. Is that the program on the BBS radio? Well, that's the program of the Prime Minister Anupali. Good afternoon, sir. How do you do? Greetings, greetings. Good evening. Some people call you World Bot, some call you World Bank. <laughs> with the program, with the gift that the World Bank is given, I have run into a lot of people who are willing to farm and farm big. But they are farming 
with fear. The fear that we are confessing is that when all what they are planting shall have come in, Minister of Agriculture, how will they get it off their hands? The fear that we have is that there will be a glut and a lot of things will go down the drain. We do not want the World Bank book to go down the drain. So it would be wise, we suggest. We were advised that we suggest that if an agricultural boat or ship could be bought and you open market in the region, this week you buy the north, next week you buy the south. Because we do not know if tourism will survive the boom in the Caribbean with this epidemic that has come and play in the world. What do you think? Give us some, some substantial confession, Mr. Minister of, of um, Agriculture. We are listening. Thank you, caller. Brigant. As the ministry and even from the World Bank project standpoint, we have, we have been discussing. Uh, as it is now, we recognize that the markets are available. We know the markets are available. The challenge we have with the markets presently is the fact that we are not consistent in our volumes. As it relates to our taste, our fruit, our produce is the best on, in the region and in some instances the world. And we know that. However, a large exporter from another island is not going to take a container from you this week, knowing very well he's not going to get a container next week. So the consistency in terms of the production has to be there. And the Minister for Trade alluded to that earlier when he spoke about the, um, the forecasting system that we are working on as we speak. But the key for us is to be able to forecast properly with reliable information so that we can meet the market demand consistently. Now, when we set up the, in the government the Agriculture Investment Unit, and I am satisfied that it has not lived up to its objectives. Because the idea behind the Agriculture Investment Unit was to um, have a recognition for commercial farmers. So there's a separation between commercial farmers and subsistence farmers. And to put in there the technical support, um, the business development support, um, the business management support to farmers involved in this. So this, this group of farmers, so you would have the 100 farmers who, or vegetable farmers, the, the 50 uh, root crop farmers. And that group would essentially be able to supply the markets with about 80% of the produce required. And then those of us who are subsistence farmers would provide the 20% that we're currently pro um, providing. I, I would want to submit to the government that we may need to revisit the operations of the, of the um, agriculture investment unit. And the intention there was that when we place the monies at the aid bank, agricultural funds, that we would have entered into an agreement with the farmer to say, okay, well, we're lending you $40,000. You're going to plant plantains. You will need to produce a yield of 12 tons of plantain per acre. If you achieve this, then the principal amount of the loan will be reduced, say, by 5 or 10%. So if you keep to that consistency of supply, and that's where you're going to get now accountability. So that when you give farmers money or farmers get a loan at 1% or 2% at the, at the aid bank, that men don't use that to buy a motor car for their girlfriend. Or they take the money to go to St. Martin or a cruise. They, they, you can see it in the farm and there is a, 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 a building up of those investments so that they 10 years down the road you can see where these investments went to. Are you looking at, you, you the new minister, are you giving any thought to this? Do you agree with me or you disagree? You can say if you, if you disagree with me, you can say that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I would want to say that I, I closed this on it by temporarily putting it on hold. Okay. Uh, as we, we retool in terms of where do we want to go and what are the objectives that we want to achieve. 
So as it relates to the, um, the farmers, we, we are doing a, a, an experiment in terms of the bananas. So what mm -hmm. we have done is we have grouped all the large farmers. And what do we consider to be large? Large is five to 10 acres or more. So yes, if you do have an acre, we'll consider your farmer, but we focus in on the five and above acreage so that mm. we know that there's a consistent amount of produce mm. on the market. Mm. But we are, would be investing in those farmers to ensure that there's a consistent production, consistent production on the market. So what I'm hearing from you, Minister, is that you are bringing now your experience in, in business to agriculture, to, to take agriculture to a more serious level. That is, that that is the goal, yes. Excellent. <laughs> now, Ian, I mean, farmers are, um, farmers need support, they need access to financing. Um, Dexa cannot find, get money to pay the <laughs> people. I don't know why, but Dexa <laughs> say they have money. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but they have the exclusive license to import rice and sugar in bulk. Sugar is a dangerous thing to all of us, um, our health and so forth. And I want to hear from the public. Because somebody told me, why don't we increase the price of sugar? Say 10 cents a pound or whatever it is. And you put that money into a separate account, into a separate fund that Dexter now would use exclusively to, pay, to help pay the farmers and not only farmers but manufacturers as well so Dexter would purchase the, the supplies using that fund to export I, I think that that is a brilliant what idea I think that that is a brilliant idea PM. what you are actually doing is you are creating a, 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 a ready source of, 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 of financing of funding of resources that will be replenished um, notwithstanding the, the hucksters' um, lack of payment yeah. for the produce received at the pack house to ensure and to guarantee that the farmers yeah. always because, have payment. That because that would also serve as a bridge financing that is correct. for the hucksters. Yes. Yeah. So that the hucksters don't have to wait a week or two weeks later to pay the farmers. He can pay the farmers right cash on delivery. That is correct. That is right. I think and everybody benefits. I think farmers would be happy with that initiative. But I would like to hear from the from the public what do you think about increasing the price of sugar <laughs> and putting this money into a separate account or separate fund that could be used for the payment of agricultural and manufactured mm -hmm. goods um, for export into the country that could also be used to to uh, provide um, bridge financing to the hucksters so that the hucksters can pay the farmers cash on delivery what do you think about this we have a caller, please. Okay. I am sure Greg, Greg, what's the guy name? Greg Thomas yes. must be laughing when we're smiling about this suggestion. <laughs> I'm sure, absolutely. Oh, okay. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> or Paula Plasco or something, you know. <laughs> um, yes, caller, please. Yes, hello, good evening. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. What do I you think about good. imposing an increase on the price of sugar? And having they have been increasing production. You hear me? Production without having irrigation. I would like to know what are you all doing to repair the irrigation system that is existing right now. No, I, I didn't get this, sir. The I would like to know system. what are you all doing to repair the irrigation systems on the island so we can increase our production. Because you because we can't have production without irrigation. Well, you, you need water, yes. You need water. Um, you know, access to water. I, I think, in respect to the irrigation, I'm, I believe you're speaking about the irrigation system in Cassie Bruce and, and in Calibishi. You would know that this was established on private lands. Um, and we're going to need the cooperation of the landowners, especially in Cassie Bruce, on the stretch in Cassie Bruce, to facilitate this. What the government was looking at is one, the possibility of acquiring those lands and putting it into the hands of farmers or people who are, who are interested in making use of those lands. And secondly, or, or um, getting those um, landowners to enter into a lease agreement with prospective interested farmers to cultivate those lands. Because the challenge you have is that the owners are not utilizing those lands. And so to go in and invest an additional sum of money 
before you can have people who are interested in farming, you're going to have a challenge. In Kalibishi, um, this is a massive irrigation system. And I believe that there were some discussions you know, in, in looking at, at, at what needs to be done yeah. to... There's an to overflow. There's an issue, there's a challenge, challenge right challenge, you know. Yes. Go ahead, please. Um, in Kalibishi, we had some issues with the land as well, but there are some, the pipes, there are some functional issues with the pipes. So we are looking at it in terms of how, because quite a few of my farmers from my constituency farm in that area. And I know Kalibishi, they're, they're using the lands there. Yes. So we're, we're giving greater attention to Kalibishi first. Right. That's correct. The irrigation system and the farm roads in that, in that specific area. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so what, what, what are the timelines we have for this? Can you tell the public at all? Um, well, COVID has delayed quite yeah. a bit. Um, so we are hoping that in the next few months, hopefully or within the next six months, bearing in mind that COVID goes away, that we can pay some attention to it. Okay. Okay. But what we agree with color irrigation is critical to agriculture. Now, oh Grant, we are, um, you also have the responsibility, the portfolio responsibility for the blue economy. This is the first time we have had a nomenclature called mm. the blue economy in a portfolio arrangement. And <coughs> I believe that the government is looking at the diversification of the economy mm. and taking advantage of new opportunities and, and opportunities that can be resilient and that can also be sustainable. What are the opportunities we are looking at uh, where the blue economy is concerned? Well, in terms of the blue economy, one of the, the main things that we are looking at is the um, preservation of our marine resource and the, the boundaries, so to speak, the beaches and upstream, um, because that is critical in terms of the survival of the marine resource. In terms of we have, prior to COVID, we were having discussion with National Geographic as they were working to come on island to do some exposure in terms of our coral reefs and how we go about restoring these coral reefs in areas like Champagne because it's a, it's a tourism product. We have had discussions with the Ministry of Tourism. They are on board as well. But in terms of the economic activity within the blue economy, one of the areas that we are, we are proud of and we are moving into is the export of fish. Um, during the last month, we exported about 5,000 pounds to um, St. Kitts. Um, we exported 2,000 pounds to um, St. Martin a few weeks ago. And there's a new, a new market that we're hoping if all goes well, we'll be doing somewhere in the region of 10,000 pounds of um, yellowfin tuna, marlin, and dolphin on a monthly basis. So that is an area that we are looking at. In terms of um, training and developing up new skills, as it is now, we are going to train some persons in the Newton area in terms of drying and smoking of the fish so that we add value in terms of the um, export and, of course, local consumption. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sounds good. Now, <coughs> the, the Japanese government is providing us with support to repair both the Marigot and the Rose of Fisheries fish. Complex. Can you give us an update on this? Mm -hmm. Well, prior to COVID, we, were so we should have been in um, Japan signing the agreement for the, um, the loan facility, well, the grant facility, sorry. Um, COVID, again, delayed this a bit, but we have worked with the Japanese government to have this done virtually mm -hmm. and otherwise. So we, we already commenced some preparatory works in terms of the um, cleaning of the site for this. But some fishermen have complained of the storage issue and the ice. We recognize the storage issue because there's quite a lot of fish on island and that it would be due to the fads that we would have installed a yeah. few a few years ago but in terms of ice what we have been doing is making ice available across the country to the um, farmers the fishermen sorry so if fishermen are having difficulties in terms of ice i would advise them to call the ministry and we will work in terms of facilitating so the, so them. The, the ice making machine at the rose of fishes complex is functional yes it's functional we have one at new tongue we installed one at yeah. ans de recently we have one have one at marigot and um, san Sauve. And then the, co the, the, the contractual sum that we're receiving from the Japanese government is 10 million, 10 million US, US 10 dollars. 10 million US dollars. It's likely to be a little bit more, more. based on the plans and designs. Yeah. But it's in the region of just over 10 million US dollars for the repairs and upgrade to the facilities. Okay. So that's a major investment in fisheries. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Major absolutely. investment. So we should see some improvement in terms of the storage facility and, of course, ice making. Okay. 
what are your final words to the public? Um, what else can we expect from agriculture and the blue economy? Uh, and with your leadership and guidance? Uh, well, firstly, I would like to thank the... You, you're a farmer as well? Though. I do some farming, backyard what, gardening. What, <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you grow? Uh, lettuce, tomatoes. Um, I am into beets. I have quite a lot of beets at this time. Nice. Yeah, okay, so you, you make juice? Yeah, I love the juice. <laughs> You, you put sugar in it? Uh, no sugar. No sugar. But that gives your final words. Um, I would like to so, find... So Ian, you grow anything? Yes, I, I just started. You just started. I know <laughs> you were coming to <laughs> Actually, I was following the almanac, and, and yesterday yeah, yeah. I spent um, some time in my backyard garden planting some um, kale, um, mm. some tomato, and, and some um, lettuce. And I have yeah. some small seasoning pepper plants and sweet pepper plants I want to put in and buy the almanac by on the 29th or the 30th. Of this month, I should be able to. So, you have an almanac in your hand, and every day you, you study <laughs> that. <laughs> um, that's right, that's good, right. good this underground, that's good this right. above ground, <laughs> yes, you kill yes. all the weeds, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. the pruning yes. of plants, and so on. So, you're watching I, that. I, I tried the first set about two weeks ago, but the sun was so hot that it burned all the tomato plants, you know. So, I had to go back in now and, 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 and put mm. in some new plants. So, I'm hoping that, that they will do much better. Mm. Grant, please. Um, no, I would like to firstly thank the, the staff within the ministry because over the last six months, I can say that I received the full cooperation from Extension, Fisheries, the administrative staff. So I would like to thank them for their, for their support. But I would also like to thank the farmers, the, the fishermen, the vendors who are forever peddling the produce of our farmers, the supermarkets who have come on stream in terms of making sure that there is a regular display of fresh produce in the supermarkets. I would like to also say thank you to them, the hucksters, the large exporters, you know, but most importantly I would like to thank the consumers who buy local and I would like to encourage them to continue to buy local and eat local. Um, I would just like to urge our young people to get back to the land. Let's get back into agriculture. There is money to be made. The Ministry of Agriculture will support you fully. The government is behind you. And most important thing I would like to leave with the listeners tonight and the young farmers or persons interested in farming, let us not treat farming as a pastime. Let us treat it as a business, and that is the only way we would be able to grow the industry in terms of farming. But we must be consistent in our quality and our quantity in order to grow the industry. And our price as well. Yes. <laughs> we have to understand yes. supply and demand. Supply and demand. And that, that, that's important. But... but I, I, I am very excited myself about agriculture, uh, I, and I agree with you, there are opportunities. Um, we, we're moving, as you know, as you have been leading, for hydroponics, um, greenhouse technology, not only just a covering, but smart, smart green, greenhouses. Um, you, you want to tell us about these two, two things that you're working on? Um, as it is now, we are looking to have um, a few demonstrations in terms of smart greenhouse so that the young persons can come and see how you basically control the greenhouse from your from your phone using an app. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that before the end of the year that we can have a yeah. few of these um, greenhouse imported. Um, they're quite efficient. And so this is, so those of us who were who, who, who viewing can, can, can see this. Right, this is that, a- That's in Portsmouth. That's in Portsmouth. The Chinese Agriculture Technical Mission. Right, that's correct. It's a 525 square <coughs> meters um, smart greenhouse. Um, it can produce up to 240,000 seedlings per month and um, we are looking to see if we can get a smaller scale for demonstration in terms of our for our young people in terms of the hydroponics we have been in discussion as it is now we have an fao technical specialist on island who is working with us to um to develop and teach the technology what we are looking to do again is the demonstration because we need to be able to show the young people how to do it and the training Thank you very much, um, Minister. Thank you. Ian, you're, uh, Minister. Uh, Minister, I'm abso absolutely excited. As, as you heard from the Ministry of Agriculture, we too in the Ministry of Trade are supporting the Ministry of Agriculture from the production end. We're taking care of the, of the export and also of the local markets. So I think we are well placed. Like you said, we restructure index here, the whole philosophy, the whole ideology behind pushing the fresh produce from Dominica, um, not only on our local plates, but on the foreign markets. And, and I believe we have the shipping in place to do it. Um, we have the pack houses that will give us the standards and, and, and put our produce out there um, in, a, in a form and in a structure that will make it appealing, will make it exciting, will make it be able to compete 
mm. with all of the other um, um, foreign products in the region. So we're very, very um, excited about the new um, um, thrust as we go yeah. forward. I, I, I think that um, where Dexter and the Parkhouse are concerned, we need to maybe speak more to the public yes. to let people know what the Parkhouse is, is, is buying and what prices and what yes. frequency, what volume. Um, so I think we may need to engage also Dexter to en sure. en engage the public more. Um, more. So I want to thank both of you for, for being here this evening. Obviously that is an ongoing discussion because uh, on our if yourselves, Minister of Trade and Minister of Agriculture, mm -hmm. um, cannot be enough time. Agriculture is critical, the export of agricultural produce is critically important. Um, there is a very keen interest in this and um, we, we would want for, for, for us to continue continue working on this. Sure. I mean, before you guys leave, I'm not sure when last you ate some watermelon. <laughs> uh, but and being that this, this stuff is local, yeah, yes, I, yes. I mean, uh, you, you guys eat fruits? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You, you guys eat <laughs> sweet tea and so on from the shops and so on. You, you know, so we want to... That's from that's from Hillary. You know, he, you know Hillary. I know Hillary very well. I know. The guy who calls the radio all the time. I know Hillary very well. <laughs> but, he's, but only respect to him. He's, he's a yes, yes, a serious farmer. Very serious farmer. Very serious, serious exporter serious, too. Serious, serious yeah. farmer. Yes. And you say this policy is a serious farmer. Definitely. Do I think you're on the wrong side? But, <laughs> but, nice, but yeah, nice, that's top nice, quality. I mean, I don't nice. know why we're buying this thing from. Yeah. Excellent. Guys. Um, Grant, here you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got like a pro, man. You have, to, you have to try something, you know. <laughs> I, I won't be prime minister all my life, you know. I have to look for another job. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Yes. So, I think we take a break, right? They say we take a break. Yes. A two minute break. Yeah, why don't we eat some watermelon? We are in the hurricane season. Here are some tips to keep your families and communities safe. Before a hurricane, ensure that you know your emergency shelters. Contact the Office of Disaster Management for information on shelters closest to you. Have disaster supplies on hand, non-perishable canned food and water, portable battery-operated radios, flashlights and extra batteries, essential medicines, first aid kits, cash and bank cards. In the home, protect your windows. A low-cost approach is to put up plywood panels. Trim branches away from your home and cut all dead or weak branches on any trees on your property. Check into your home and auto insurance. Confirm that policies are valid and coverage is appropriate. Make arrangements for pets and livestock. Develop an emergency communication plan. Make sure that all family members know what to do. Teach family members how and when to turn off gas, electricity and water. During a hurricane watch, listen to the radio or television for hurricane progress reports. Avoid open flames such as candles and kerosene lamps as a source of light. If power is lost, turn off major appliances to reduce power surge when electricity is restored. Store drinking water in clean jugs, bottles, and cooking utensils. During a hurricane warning, if you need to evacuate your home, lock up and go to the nearest shelter. Take blankets or sleeping bags to the shelter. Listen constantly to a radio or television for official instructions. Store valuables and personal papers in a waterproof container on the highest level of your home. Stay inside, away from windows and glass doors. All right, thank you. Welcome back. You know, we had a watermelon break. <laughs> um, I wish I could send some to all of you who are, who are listening and during this. Uh, next week, I, I want to focus on health. Uh, I recently met with the National Health Commission. As you know, the government appointed a National Health Commission chaired by the distinguished um, medical doctor, Dr. Uh, Schillingford. And... Um, we, there are many important things happening with that commission and I would like us to assess the work ongoing uh, to improve the administration of the health sector 
and to update um, its mandate amidst the new challenges uh, posed by COVID-19. Uh, so we will have the Minister for Health, Honorable Dr. Um, McIntyre, who will be with us along with the uh, membership of the Health Commission. As we all know, work is progressing satisfactorily at the Dominica China Friendship Hospital. And we, we, we want to thank our friends, uh, the People's Republic of China, uh, for working. We never stopped working, even if COVID wasn't, was around, uh, because the hospital is critical uh, to the hurricane season and beyond. Uh, work is also progressing satisfactorily on the Marigot Hospital, a massive edifice, a um, huge structure that we believe will transform the, the delivery of healthcare services in the Marigot Health District. There are several health centers that are due to open soon. There are some that are open. We are now waiting the furniture and equipment that's been delayed, um, but they'll be here in a couple of weeks' time, a few weeks' time. Once they arrive, then we'll have formal ceremonies to, to commission these health centers. I'm talking about Bellevue Chopin, I'm talking about Vickers, I'm talking about Portsmouth. Um, we have settled the lands in Newtown, and thank you to the landowner there who, who has agreed to sell us some 18,000 square feet of land close to the um, Catholic Church. And I want to commend the efforts of the Pal Rep um, for pushing this forward. We've also, we, we are making progress in Sufria, and I'm hoping that we can conclude. The Pal Rep has been at the forefront of leading the efforts in that. In Anzdemir, we have settled the lands, and the, to the efforts of the Pal Rep who have spoken to the landowners. Uh, Collier, we are discussing with the landowner. I believe there was a meeting last week, and we're hoping that we can make some progress uh, with this. Um, so we, we are making, we're making progress where health is concerned, and we will get updates from the Minister for Health, Dr. McIntyre, next week. Um, and of course, with all of these health centers, these modern smart health centers, with the new um, hospital, with the new Marriott Hospital, uh, with, the, with the number of investments we've made in improvement of health facilities and training of people, we have to look, start looking at new policies, new guidelines for the administration of healthcare system in Dominica and how can we address uh, more effectively issues of quality. People complain, rightly and wrongly so, but we have a duty and a responsibility to take note of the complaints of the public. And so we believe with the new health, um, the new administrative structure, um, it will be able to address a number of the challenges which we, the public, have been raising about the healthcare services in Dominica. So it's not only about the buildings, it's also about the structures, the management structures, and the policies, and the legislation. So legislation will go to Parliament, and we're giving ourselves a deadline by September of this year to, one, bring in a medical health professional's bill to the Parliament that will manage and govern the affairs of, of um, health professionals and how they conduct themselves, and also we'll be creating a, 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 a hospital authority. A, a hospital authority is a, is a statutory entity which will have the authority in law, and there'll be a new structure at the hospital to address issues. So with this new structure, our hope is, and of course we'll get more details next week, but our hope is the city scan should not be done for so long, for example. That we have to find a, a quicker means of, of, of setting up these things and addressing the, the, the dysfunctional nature of some of this, of, of, of this equipment that are so badly needed um, in the proper delivery of healthcare services. So there are a number of very exciting things are happening. I want to commend the, the Health Commission for the work and also the Minister for his leadership. Also, the minister will give us, uh, give us an update on the opening of our borders and what, what um, protocols we're going to put in place for testing of people who are coming in, whether we're going to quarantine people, and when they come in, or we're just going to test them. They test negative, they go home, they go to the hotels, they test positive, we address their, their circumstance. So we look forward to, to this. Um, and so <clears throat> whatever questions you may have, please, you can forward them in advance. I've been told one on one, on one at anupale.com. So you can send questions in advance. We'll take note of those questions as, as I did with the ministers um, this evening. All of the questions I asked came from you, the public. Um, and, and so we look forward to, to your suggestions. Um, I will also want to speak before we leave because I have been told that we have to keep to time. They say last time scared went over time and it was end at 8 o'clock. So they, they put in cards up to me and tell me 
um, time is up and so on. You know, I don't like to be in a straight jacket, but you know, um, what can you do? Um, they say I have, I have 15 minutes. We have to talk about responsibility in this country. We talk about what government should do, what government must do, what government has to do. This is fine. That's our, that's our duty, that's our responsibility. But I believe that we in our country, we have to speak about responsibility. We have to be more constructive in our country. We have to um, be more positive in our country. We will always have our differences, but, but we need to be more constructive in our country. And we all want a better Dominica. The question is, what are you prepared to do to assist in the development of Dominica? Talk is cheap. And we've talked to talk shows as one leader in the Caribbean once said, um, talk is even cheaper. Are you prepared to you know, put your hand uh, to the plow and to assist with nation building? We do not have all of the ideas in the government as to how to run this country. We don't have a monopoly on this. But I believe that Dominica has sufficient talent and skills within our, 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 our um, jurisdiction or territorial jurisdiction to, to, um, to get things going. But there's just too much negativity in our country and too many people are not thinking positively about Dominica. Um, so are we taking questions? Are we taking calls? We can, we can take calls because I, I'd rather hear from the people rather than me speaking to them. Um, but but there, there's a lot of work to be done. We, we, we are in the still COVID period. Uh, there is a concern about reopening our borders and ensuring that we provide, we can protect our citizens from being infected. But as I said last time, we have to open our borders. And we have to open our bodies. So you, call, you could call 611-3400 or 225-3400 um, if you have any questions or suggestions for us. So I'm hoping that with this program, Anupali, we can hear from you as you hear from us because it is through this constructive, positive, mutually respectful engagement we can make a difference in this country and we can address the issues. We saw tonight... Uh, a phone call, please. Go ahead. Good evening. Hi, good evening to you. Happy Father's Day. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. So I want to say Happy Father's Day to my Prime Minister, Roosevelt Carey, the doctor. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy Father's Day to you, my PM. Thank you. How is the wife? Everybody is fine. She's fine. Thank you. Okay, God bless you. God bless you too. You are doing a fantastic job and there is no one before you but God. And no one will be after you. You are the most perfect Prime Minister we ever have in this country. And may you continue to do the work for the Lord. You are doing a fantastic job. Thank and you. And don't worry if the enemies are fighting you. God is in control of your life. Thank you He's very much. He's your protector and director. And I claim that precious blood of the Lamb of God from the crown of your head to the sole of your foot. No weapon that form against you cannot prosper. God is your director. And mommy praying for you every day, night and day. Thank you very now much. Ta ta we will lose the caller. Sorry. Is, is, we have another call, please? Go, go ahead, please. Hello? 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 Go ahead. Yeah, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. You see, my brother, let me tell you that PM. Hello, good night. Yes, go ahead, I'm listening. I'm telling you that you just like Joshua the prophet. Hello? Hello? Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Hello? Hello? We're we hearing you. Go ahead. Yes, don't... you're hearing my voice. I'm not hearing you. But don't listen to your television. Turn the television off. Or... Turn the television off? Yeah, and listen to us. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes. I need to, I need to um, talk to my PM. That's scary. Yes, I'm, I'm here. 
That's scary. That's yes. not scary voice. <laughs> you better stop your nonsense, sir. <laughs> Are you going to give me the PM to talk on the phone to, to wish him Happy Father's Day? That, that's, that's scary speaking to you, darling. Go ahead. Hi, good night, um, PM. <laughs> <laughs> happy Father's Day. Why are you all doing this? Thank you very much. Uh, PM, I need, to, I need to talk to you. It's an emergency. I've been trying to get you on all avenues. I cannot get you. Take my phone number to call me. We'll take your number and we'll call you, okay? What you say? We have your number, we'll call you. You will what? We will call you, we will call you. You make sure, because if you don't make him call me the next time, I wouldn't be saying nothing nice on the radio station I want in you. <laughs> Thank you very much, darling. God bless you, have a good night. Sleep well. <laughs> Go ahead, next caller, please. Or oh, do you have a WhatsApp message or calls? Um, you know. Hello, go ahead, please. Hello. Hi. Please turn off your red, your television yes. and, and follow us, please. Good night, PM. Yes, sir, go ahead, Happy Father's Day to you all. Um, what I was concerned, uh, you know, in Dominica, it have about 60% of are doing farmers. Uh, labor working with the people on the land and the field. So what I'm concerned is, I have two of them working with me. I'm a Haitian also. Mm. But uh, each time the man have to leave this job and come to the for them to win the work with me, I would like you to give us uh, a word of that, what that caused you now when they come and win the work with me. So they say they're not receive no work permit for them right now. You're talking about the work permits? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Um... I take note of your concerns about they have to come into town. Uh, as you know, we have tried to facilitate the Haitian community. They are brothers and sisters. They are our Caricom brothers and sisters as well. Um, we have quite a number of them here. Um, many of them are, are engaged in constructive activities that are all aiding the, the economy of Dominica. They're providing labor um, in a number of sectors of the economy. And, and we appreciate their presence in Dominica and we welcome them to our country and, and to be part of the Dominican community. The, 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 the vast majority of them are, are law-abiding citizens, they respect the laws of Dominica, our constitution, but you will also agree that there are some um, who engage in activities that, that, that place Dominica in, in some difficulty, especially those who, are, who leave our shores illegally and go into Guadeloupe and, and Martinique and, and St. Martin. Um, that is something that I would like the Haitian community to assist us in eliminating. I think if we can eliminate this, it, it places a greater level of, 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 of trust um, and confidence of us further facilitating um, our Haitian brothers and sisters in Dominica. Um, so I think if we can address this issue, my brother, um, then um, one could maybe get longer term work permits rather than the shorter term work permits which they're currently getting. Um, so if we can work on this, I, and, and, and I've met many of you here, you know, you're really constructive, hardworking people. So, so I take note of your concern, but there are ways of addressing it. Um, next caller, please. Good evening, Prime Minister. Hi, good evening Mrs. to you. Garrett? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kathy Mingo. I'm calling from England. And it's with regard to my auntie um, who applied for a, uh, in Lap Lane, who applied for an apartment and she didn't receive her keys. I'm not sure if you've heard of the case. Well, I, I don't have the, I will have to find out about this for you. Sorry? I, I can't give you a response to this. All I can do is ask a question tomorrow morning of the minister. So I, I, will, I will find out about this particular person. And I'm sure Should the minister, I give you... Well, the, I, I'm sure when the, minister, the, par, the parliamentary rep and also the minister um, is, is listening, so, so we will certainly look at this question that you're having in respect to this particular person. Check, check her name. Okay? Can we text you her name? 
I've, got, I've taken note of the name, so we have the name. You, you said the name, so I've noted the name. Kathy Mingo. That's my name. That's your name. What's, what's her your name? name is, her name is... Oh, text us. Pascal. Te text us the name, please. Send a text to us. Okay. Okay, darling. God bless you. Then. Hey, go ahead, please. Call up. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, go ahead, please. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. PM. Uh, I'm hearing Happy you, Saturday my friend. You. Go ahead. Right, thank you. I, I do have a problem, sir. And I just want to see if you can help me. And my wife was afforded a house at Grandfour and she did not get her keys. She was in the first ceremony and now the second one just went on Wednesday. She was not, um, she did not get her keys. So I was just asking you, look into it. Her name is, would you like me to give it a name, Mr. Pierre? It's up to you, you could, it's up to you, go ahead. Well, Decima Williams, Decima Roberts Williams. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. We will Hi, take two evening. more callers and then we will we'll close it. Go ahead, please. Hi, PM. Good evening. Good evening to you. Happy Father's Day to you. Thank you, my darling. Thank you. I'm calling from Bells. Bells. I, I, I recognize your voice. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, PM. And I, I will give you a call tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow you got there? God's, God's willing, yes. Yes, make sure because the PM I need to talk to you. I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay. All right, darling. Okay, God, you have a good night. Love you too. God bless you, man. Okay. Uh, next caller, please. Hello? That's it. Well, I want to thank all the callers and those who sent um, text messages, WhatsApp messages to us. Um, we look forward to speaking with you next Sunday, God's willing. Uh, again, I wish everybody a wonderful evening. Let us uh, wake up tomorrow morning early, go to work to serve our God and our country. Dominica needs us. We are going through uh, uncharted waters um, with regards to COVID-19 and the, the implications and the challenges which COVID-19 has brought onto Dominica and the world. Um, but I believe that we can overcome those challenges. Uh, these challenges are not to cause us to be, to, to be daunted. It, it calls for us to, to give a greater commitment to ourselves and our country and our fellow men. And I believe if we renew our commitment to our country, um, we can overcome these challenges. I mean, uh, Maria was devastating, um, followed, um, you know, succeeding, succeeding Erica. And we, we worked together and, we, and overcame the challenges. Many of us, if not all of us in this country, never thought that Dominica would have rebounded. And we rebounded much quicker than all of us expected. Um, so let us work together to overcome these challenges. We have to be responsible. We have to manage our money. This is not a time for us to go and spend on things that we don't need. You, you, you spend on things that you need. It, you know, so let us manage our monies and not, and not, um, not um, waste. We have to conserve. Uh, we have to be responsible, um, and we have to be focused in this time. So, so thank you very much, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, thanks for your calls. Thanks for listening. Thanks for viewing this program. We look forward to, work, to speaking with you next Sunday before Minister for Health, Honorable McIntyre, and the members of the commission. Thank you. Sleep well. God bless you. God bless our country, and God bless the Caribbean and the world. Thank you.